Good evening, everybody. I'd like to call tonight's meeting to order, if I may. Uh, today is Tuesday, August 27th, 2013. We have a village board meeting followed by a committee of the whole meeting. It looks like it's about 7.05 p.m. Our first item is the <coughs> Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Sherby, would you please call the roll this evening? Present. 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 We do have a quorum. I would uh, ask the board's indulgence. Um, if you see on our committee the whole meeting, there's an economic development survey. Uh, I've been asked by uh, Pastor Joe Mills, who's the, the chair of that, if it would be okay to uh, add that to our presentation um, under our board presentation. And, uh, and not do it under old business. On the committee of the whole, there's another time commitment, and I think he wants to make a presentation. So is the board okay with that? Sure. There's no decisions are gonna be made, it's information only. Sure. Are we all fine with that? Okay. All right, our, uh, our next presentation is the swearing in of our, our new police chief, John M. Carpino, who is present in the audience with his lovely wife, Patty, in the front row. So, yes, on with it we go. <laughs> um, most of you may or may not know this, but uh, John and I started our career with the Madison Police Department in 1972. Our careers have pretty much paralleled themselves with Chief, Chief McCollum from the Grange Park Police Department and also Chief Francis Abbey from the Melrose Park Police Department. Back in the day, there were a lot of chiefs that uh, were trained in the village of Addison. And I'm uh, pleased to know John back in the day. He's my boss back there. I was uh, one of the, uh, the original cadets. I was in the second phase of it. And uh, he's kind of a, a fine police officer. And I had the opportunity to work for him in Georgia Royal Springs as a commander. And uh, I think you'll see that. John has all the expertise that you've seen on his resume and will be a valuable asset to all the police community and all the police officers that are here today and now and in the future. So, with that, thank you for joining us. I'm the Chief Sergeant Deputy for the U.S. Police. I, Jason Lee. I, John M. Carpenter. John M. Carpenter. John M. Carpenter. I support the Constitution of the United States.
explained we started the job together back in 1972. June 12th for me, uh, 1972 was the Madison Police Department. I served almost 40 years in law enforcement, national head leader of the city manager of the city of Madison Police Department. And I was for 25 years in the military of the Madison Police in 2002. Came and tapped Sam to be my commander of the Willow Springs Police Department 10 years ago. You all surround yourself with people that are as smart
but believe me, um, I'll do the right thing and do the things right. And I say this to Howard Lewis Trust, so I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoy being a cop. Um, for a couple years I've been out of it, I didn't think I'd ever go back to it, but for some reason I saved my unit. And for whatever reason, if I was going out, I think I just don't have something really starting to know. Um, as you can see, I don't have a speech, I don't need a speech. You think the mayor can talk, I can have you here all night. <laughs> you put an MSU, make yourself up, and you're doing your profession. Um, it is what it is. But I'm very honored that um, the village president had the confidence in me to offer me the opportunity. Your village manager, Janet, your elected officials, uh, Pablo Russo, Angelo, Calcagno, Tom Yorkovich, um, Celeste Retta, Nick Stecker, and Frank Perry. I really appreciate your support 100%. And of course, uh, Mike Durkin, uh, Durkin, your village attorney, um, he's a Holy Cross crusader like me, so we're good to go. Um, <laughs> is there any more Holy Cross crusaders that are listening and you know, can help you out with extra points? Uh, I want to acknowledge the people that are here besides the rank and file members of the Westchester Police Department that are very kind and are here. Because once again, um, you're the best asset I've got. I got all, I've got all the knowledge and staff to come into and being a chief of three different files and being the police.
Safety, you know, road safety, yeah. tire guard management, there's a lot of guns, a lot of drugs, it's gang, um, feeding people for all families, a, a dying of heroin overdoses, dying of people who have family members that have addiction problems, and everybody knows somebody that's got a family member that's had some kind of issue with this kind of stuff. We got to work with the schools, I was very happy to see the lieutenants, but I asked them, I want to make sure there's police cars at the schools, they said it's covered. They already had, you know, they're in hospice, which is very good. People like to see police cars at the school in the morning to fix this stuff up. So I'll be there myself. I'm not going to be playing with strangers. Um, I'll be everywhere. And I'm sure Code Sergeant and Sam will be too. So there'll be many nights that I'm at home that's all right. I'll probably say Mary for the young man. So I've got a two year contract. I'll, I'll give it my best. And I'm hoping it'll happen for a couple years after that. And hopefully this is my last stop in Aspen. I'll see you in Just trust me. Okay, uh, thanks John, and again, welcome, uh, welcome to the fold. Our second item this evening is a presentation that we pulled from the, uh, the Committee of the Whole meeting, and I would call on uh, Reverend Joe Mills to uh, provide the, uh, the board with a summary of your, your task as the Economic Development Committee. And, and Frank, um, as a liaison, certainly, if there's any comments that you need to uh, oh, I'll, address I'll on this point, Feel free. Thank you. Well, I'm Pastor Joe Mills of 2823 Mayfair. I've been a 19 year resident and a pastor at Westchester Community United Church of Christ. And I am the current chairperson for the Economic Development Committee, which has been comprised from your village board of seven people who care deeply about the economic life of the village. Hello, I am Allison Musel. I'm the owner of Bookkeeping Express, located here in Westchester, and I'm also a long-term Westchester resident and a member of the Economic Development Committee. We're okay for a minute. I'll just be as loud as we can, if that will help. Your Economic Development Committee has been hard at work. We have a primary job and that is business retention, development, and expansion in the life of the village of Westchester. As part of that, we have been at work not only internally but externally. We had a summit recently with partners in the life of the village which included business owners, chamber of commerce, the library, the public and private schools, and we have been consulting with them about the needs in the economic life of the village. As a result, several things came out. Uh, the primary work was to work on a business survey, which was in part about retention and in part about development. 
wanted to give you a summary statement about what we have been doing with that and then some of the results from that. As part of your 2012 strategic plan, we created this survey to assess the needs of our businesses. Primary objectives included the understanding of the challenges and opportunities for Westchester businesses, availability of business assistance within the community, <coughs> strengths and weaknesses of Westchester as a place to conduct business, perceptions of local barriers concerning retention, expansion, and attraction of business, profitability of business expansion, relocation, closure, or sale. Now, interestingly enough, I don't think most people know this, but it's not just bricks and mortar, but when you take all of the possible businesses in the village, we have around 700 businesses. And in response to the survey, we received an almost 23% response rate, 23 response, which most people, if you know anything about surveys, is a phenomenal response. Here is the results of that. Most businesses are renting their commercial space. Average business has been in operation for 14 years. The longest operating business that responded has been in operation for 51 years. The largest employer to respond, 2,000 full-time employees. And the average is 32 employees. Most of the customers of the businesses are coming from Cook County. Here is what we found as further findings. As the economy improves, the survey indicates that businesses are beginning to see improvement. Most are seeing an increase or the same level of sales versus last year. Over 60% of businesses indicated they either planned to hire new employees or maintain the same level of employment next year. One-fifth of the businesses that responded indicated that they do have growth or expansion plans in the future. Almost two-thirds of the businesses that responded to the survey indicated that they felt our village was business friendly. The community service the village offers either ranked good or fair. All the qualities of Westchester as a place to do business ranked as good or fair. Here were some of the things that emerged from that which has guided our work both during and beyond. When businesses were asked what types of programs or assistance they would like to see the village or affiliated organizations offer, these were the things most cited. Establish a shop local program. Improve the permitting and licensing processes. Businesses would like, in general, to see more communication from the village directly to businesses. They would like to see more information on business assistance. Almost all wanted more economic development in the life of the village. They wanted to see an improvement in roads and signage. Be many businesses indicated they were happy with the services offered. Some couldn't think of any services not already being offered that they needed in addition. Now, some things that we have gleaned from this beyond. When we looked at the surveys, if you were to look at quadrants from poor to excellent, we did not rate poor at all or low fare, but nowhere were we considered excellent. It was solid, fair to good. So there clearly is room for improvement in many areas, which includes business friendliness, communication, village governance impacting. We clearly had a conversations and many notes that were given us about things like zoning and codes and things that as that is improved and communicated well will be very helpful for businesses. Likewise, our committee has been at work on some of the tangent issues because remember it is about retention, development, and getting new businesses. So the other areas that we've been working at very hard with the partners has been uh, communication issues and community, community pride beautification issues, things like green initiatives, signage issues, which I believe, do we have, um, I think, Greg, you may have a couple of things that we can put up here very, very quickly.
as quickly. But it will get there, I know it will. We want to look essentially at some of the things about signage. We have a signage proposal that we are working with that I believe most of you have received some of the general information. Uh, for people in the audience, one of the things we've discovered about signage issues, as you know, Westchester is not what you call a square community in the sense that there's easy understandings of boundaries and there's a lot of interrelational issues that <coughs> impact Westchester for issues of signage. So it's, it's not as easy as you say, okay, let's just go to every place and you can just easily <coughs> put up a sign. It doesn't work that way. So what we have done is we've put out to partners trying to get understandings about possible kinds of signs. We're looking at two different sizes. I'm not going to go into all of the, the requisite detail, but I know you will get this. Signs that will not just simply be for beautification, but are very clearly for support of business and business corridors in the life of the village, because we really do want to attract people to businesses for shopping. That's very critical to this entire project. So we want you to know that we've got bids going out that will come back to you. That's the whole purpose. The, the, uh, for everybody's uh, sake, the committee does not, we only are a referring body to the life of the village. The village itself makes decisions, and we're very, very clear on that. And we want to make sure that we're doing our homework for you so that by the time it gets to you, you know that a lot of stuff's been taken care of. That's the critical issue in partnership and having people volunteer and be part of your committee structures. So I just want you to know that we've got that going and that, for, uh, that we're really looking at seven main areas in the life of the village for possible signage that we think will help attract and also support existing businesses. Uh, the other thing very clearly is we're looking at, par at expanded partnerships in the life of the village for things that are beautification so that everybody understands what we're really talking about. Everybody has been to places, not just here, but many other locations where there are businesses that are dilapidated, that the grounds are not good, that adjoining properties are not taken care of. And part of our job is to help you to not only see that, but understand possible solutions. Because for instance, if you've got a business that is next door or two doors away from an area that is considered blighted, it's going, to, it's going to affect that business, and we deeply want to make sure that we are attending to those things because we want the businesses in this community to succeed. That is the whole purpose of this conversation. So the bottom line for us is we want you to know that we've got some initial results. Many of them are very good. There is room for improvement. Uh, I know that I would speak for our committee directly in great thanks for uh, Melissa Headley and Janet Mathis and Molly Keene. They've been phenomenal in working with us on a regular basis. Uh, your trustee Frank Perry has been very, very helpful. Uh, Sam, you've been very helpful. But we want to make sure that you understand we're doing our work. We meet regularly and we work hard on your behalf. Uh, do you have anything that might be in addition to that that you think that might be helpful? No, I, I think one of the things, though, is talking about some of the next steps that we're doing. Uh, one of them is we are going to be having another summit meeting coming up on the September 16th, <coughs> where we're inviting other community leaders to take a look at the, the survey results and really identifying what are the action plans that we as a community can uh, work on, uh, again, for the entire purpose of the business retention, attraction, and expansion. We thank you for that moment. I want you to know, though, for, for the unofficial record, I spoke in shorter than the new police chief, and that's an amazing <laughs> accomplishment just by itself as a pastor. Thank you so much for your attendiveness. Um, yeah, do you have a time for that summit meeting? 7 o'clock. That's on the sheet. Thank okay. you. Uh, and we thank you very, very much. And uh, just a couple of questions before Allison and Joe, you leave. Um, the signs look wonderful. I know this has been a, a, a project about the wayfiring signs for several years. Uh, this is a, a beautiful concept that I've seen in other communities, and why not us? So as soon as we can get these things at a reasonable cost, I think we should pretty much move forward with this. I think this is the thing that we were talking about years ago. There's other opportunities that are here. I know you're a member of the Chamber of Commerce as well. And I know there's some struggle trying to get membership in the Chamber of Commerce and for whatever buy-in they need to be part and parcel of assisting us and assisting the Chamber in assisting themselves in making a viable business 
in the village of Westchester. I mean, uh, it's some of the beautification things that I've noticed just in the last week was where the old post office was. Mm -hmm. He put the new brickwork on the building. He actually put flowers in the pots, put them out of the, uh, the opening, and it's really made a better look to that building, albeit probably the, uh, the awning would be probably the, the next piece right. of of hopefully what he's planning on doing and hopefully that'll stimulate other businesses that when people are traveling down Mannheim Road it, it's catching your eye. The 1-800 florist is a wonderful spot as well that he's put some money in making that a uh, you know kind of a diamond in the rough along Mannheim Road and I would hope all the businesses would belong to the chamber, get involved in the process and certainly what we can do to assist I think will be right there and you'll you'll see that the board will, is right behind you as well. And, and two quick responses from that. Part of our work in the partnership has been to find ways to encourage the existing businesses. How do we acknowledge and recognize them for achievements and longevity and the good service that they provide in the community? And we're looking at that because, again, you always start with what you have. And if you do not support that, nothing else really happens. Uh, the second thing, by the way, your Chamber of Commerce was a very big piece of the financing of that business survey. So your chamber has already been an active and a very solid and a good partner in this. And we want to make sure that that is powerfully acknowledged. Thank you. I appreciate that you brought that up. Are there any other questions? Very good. Well, thank you so much. And uh, blessings and blessings on your new chief. Thank you, sir. OK, our next item is public comments and questions. To give as many visitors as possible an opportunity <coughs> to speak in the interest of adjourning by 9, please limit your comments to three minutes unless further time is granted by the board. Comments on questions on the active or general matters. Um, I know there's uh, some questions regarding uh, our active agenda on the um, video gaming is here today. So if any of the people would like to speak on any of the topics that are there, please step up to the microphone, introduce yourself, and, uh, and have your three-minute comment period. Is there anyone who would like to step up and say a few words about anything? Please introduce yourself, sir. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Michael Allred. I'm the owner of Q's Restaurant and Pizzeria in Hillside. Uh, I've been there for 42 years, believe it or not. We've been there for 53 years. Uh, we're very active in the community. We remember the chamber here in Westchester. Uh, we work with the schools, the churches, the community. Uh, a lot of you know me, some of you don't. Uh, my thoughts on the video gaming, uh, you know, Hillside had opted out of it also. Uh, once we, you know, Hillside looked into it and realized that other surrounding communities were going to have it, they were worried that, you know, I would lose business and which has happened in other places. Uh, I know a lot of the towns originally opted out due to the, you know, the gray areas of, you know, quote unquote gambling that used to be years ago. We all know it's, you know, pretty much common knowledge that there was illegal machines everywhere. Uh, you don't find that any longer. Uh, my true feelings are that it has helped my business. You know, you know I don't have to tell some of the people here that are businessmen, you know, our, our cost of doing business has gone up tremendously. It's a little shot in the arm for me. It's helped me make up revenue that I've lost. Uh, I know some of the objections that people and communities have had, well, it's gonna bring in a bad element. I can't say that. And I'm, you know, I'm on Butterfield Road, you know, let's face it, you can have some characters walking up and down the street and I've had no problems. If somebody comes in, I don't just let them come in and sit to play the machine. They're ordering a drink, they're ordering a sandwich. Uh, it's been a help to business, it really has. And for the community, uh, it, everything is so up and above board, it's unbelievable, to the penny. Everything goes through a computer system with the state of Illinois, generates the money that comes out, it's paid to the village and the state. The village would get 5% of the revenues. The state, they're 25 percent, and then the operator and myself, we split the 70 percent. Out of that 70 percent, we have to pay all our fees to the state, the village. Now, I'm not sure how Westchester is, but in Hillside, 
they get $1,000 a machine, you know, plus their 5%. And, you know, Cook County, they've got another tax. Everybody found a new way to make money. Uh, and I can't see that it's hurt anyone. You know, I've had my machine since January. I've had a lot of people, that it's very positive. I get the senior citizens come in from Mays Lake over in Oak Brook on little luncheon trips all the time. And if you could see how cute they are playing their 30 cents and they go back and forth, it's, it's almost comical. And like I said, I, I don't feel that it's hurt anybody. I have not had any complaints. Uh, the Illinois Gaming Commission is on top of this like you can't believe. There's no way that there's any gray areas where, okay, before I open up today, I'm gonna open up the machine and I'm gonna take a few dollars out of here, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. You cannot do it. When you open up that machine, they have access to the cash, that's it. Beyond that, where all the computers are and the hard drives, everything goes through a computer to the state of Illinois. As soon as that door is open, there's tamper-proof evidence tape, which you know your, the policemen are familiar with, as soon as that happens, the machine shuts down. If you're worried about people staying to, at a business after hours, when we applied for our license, we have to list our business hours. At two o'clock in the morning, I don't care if a guy's got you know, $200 in the machine, it automatically shuts off and spits a ticket out. You know, it's, it's totally regulated. And I can see you know, it's not gonna do any harm in the village. You know, people, they say, well, if they have a gambling addiction. You know, there's all sorts of you know, addictions out there. As our new chief said, you know, you've got people who all have problems in their families. You know, we've all experienced it. And there's help out there for people. And you know, that's my feelings. And does anybody have any questions about it? My experience over the course of the last, you know, eight, nine months? Oh, one other quick thing. All the companies that are here in Illinois have gone through the ringer to have been approved. And all of us business owners were all done with background checks and everything more than I did to get my liquor license originally. And the Gaming Commission, like I said, they are on it all the time. So any questions from anybody? Hey, Michael, uh, I thank you very much for your, for your comments. Okay. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jean Clotter. Um, I live at 1920 Norfolk. And I don't disagree that um, probably all the regulations and everything are in place. And I have been in various locales that do have um, the gaming machines, and they've been fine. But I just want to say that personally, I don't like to go to places that have gaming machines in them. So if what we're going to do in Westchester is basically look at this as a money-making venture and see a reason to be putting gaming machines in all of our, the few restaurants and opportunities that we have, or building new ones and saying that the only way a business can make money is to have these machines, I'm not sure I'll be uh, frequenting those places in Westchester. Just a personal opinion, so I'm not sure how many people share that. As well, thank you very much. Hi, Steve Bannersby, uh, 1905 Belmora. See, I have just a couple of fast questions on the gaming ordinance. I, I, there's a licensing fee, I assume, that when you start this up? We go by the state, that's $25 per machine. Not like, the not the thousand, like Hillside's Home Rule, they have a little different operation. So it's $25 per machine for you at the, the beginning? Yes, that's the, the, the fee. And then uh, every year, is there a fee like that too? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Anyone else, please? Please. Any other comments and public comments? Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm Sharon Van Pelt. I'm from 1316 Hull Avenue, and I feel as the other lady does. I'm opposed to video gambling. I'm sure that you know what's best for your business, but I personally know that services for addiction in Illinois are terrible. They've been cut badly, and I don't support this initiative. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? 
Going once. Anyone else? Going twice. Anyone else? Three times. Okay. Uh, any public hearings? No, not this evening. I uh, just, I know John's daughter did step in, Lindsay, if you wouldn't mind standing up. And uh, this is John's daughter, Lindsay, and her fiance. Yeah. <laughs> well, your dad's in, so, so far so good. <laughs> All right, item number seven, our consent agenda. We have a uh, record of bills, board meeting minutes, sale of surplus property with the uh, new ambulance purchase, um, village manager execute agreement for interlocal purchasing system, which will give us a little bit more uh, um, I guess bid connections to see what uh, things are worth and that we could get them for and also retaining Mike Jurisic as the Board of Fire and Police Commission attorney. Anyone need anything pulled? If not, there's a motion to second Wait, approval. Can I pull the record of bills, please? Okay, item number A. Um, anything else? B through E. Any questions? So moved. Second. Motion by Frank, second by Paul. Roll call on those, Sherby, please. Trustee DeCusso. Aye. Trustee Perry. Aye. Trustee Dito. Aye. Trustee Stetner. Aye. Trustee Jokovic. Aye. Trustee Calpagno. Aye. Hi. <coughs> motion carries. Uh, item A that was pulled by uh, Trustee Tom Yurkovich. Is there a motion to second for approval of the record of bills to start a discussion? Motion by? So moved. Paul, second by? Second. Nick, Tommy, all yours. Um, there's a bill here for the Westchester Park District for 1957-46. I just want to pull that and vote on that separately. Which one, Tommy? For the Park District, for the festival workers, for... Okay. Okay, so the request on the floor is to do a separate um, vote on that park district bill. Okay. Which one do you want to take first? And I will do, uh, why don't we do the, all of them and then we'll go into that. Is that okay? Okay. Is there a motion and a second to approve all the record of bills with the exception of the park district bill that, that Tom pulled? Motion. So, Celeste, second. Second. Paul, roll call please. Sherby, Trustee sorry. Perry. Aye. Aye. Trustee Yorkovich? Aye. Trustee Calhagno? Aye. Trustee DeCusso? Aye. President Julia? Aye. Motion carries. Is there a motion and a second to approve the Park District uh, bill that has been presented? Motion by? Motion. Celeste, second. I'll second. Second. Okay, Paul. Paul, again? Roll call, please. Trustee Vita? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Trustee Calhagno? Aye. Trustee DeCusso? Aye. Trustee Perry? Aye. 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 Motion carries on that as well. Item number eight on our active agenda ordinance amending Title V entitled Business License and Regulations and Title VII entitled Public Peace, Safety, and Morals of the Village of Westchester Municipal Code to provide for the regulation of video gaming. Motion. So moved. Nick, second. Aye. Celeste, discussion. Paul. A couple of things, as we heard some of the residents here tonight saying about what, you know, the opposing of it. Uh, do, how many licenses would be eligible in our town right now for video gaming? I believe we have six. Six pours in, in restaurant facilities. The, the others uh, are uh, um, gas stations, which wouldn't be operable, um, package, jewel, <coughs> tea, Dominic's, et cetera. Uh, under the state law, you have to have a liquor license for consumption on the premises. Um, and so you would be limited. That would be your maximum number of uh, locations. This draft of this ordinance currently provides that there are zero location ordinances and zero video gaming terminal licenses available. So um, 
the the maximum right now is zero but the, of course uh, the scheme of the ordinance is designed so that as you get an application and it's approved by the liquor commissioner mayor Puglia it would come back to the village board uh, to amend the ordinance to change that number for the location license and the number of terminal licenses and that also goes if one goes under it's decreased by it one. automatically decreases the location licenses by one and the terminal licenses by the number <coughs> of terminal licenses one to five that were issued to that location is there any way to make it a little more stringent on how big of a location, how small of a location, in any way, shape, or form? Is there something that we can do as a village? Unfortunately, as a non-home rural municipality, we're limited to what the state law allows, and it doesn't have a restriction like that. I think the gentleman that spoke said that uh, Hillside's license fee was a thousand dollars unfortunately the statute was written specifically with a restriction that non-home rule municipalities cannot charge more than twenty five dollars for a license and we can't have locational restrictions other than what are contained in the statute sizes of businesses etc so your choices are if you want to allow video gaming in the village you can choose to either amend the ordinance by simply amending the one section that currently prohibits video gaming and saying that it's allowed pursuant to uh, the regulations of the Illinois Gaming Board, which means that the state will have sole control over that process or the type of ordinance that you have in front of you. And if I may, as the Liquor Commission, if those of you that had said on my liquor hearings when an applicant comes to us, we convene a board. There's uh, two trustees usually with me. We discuss the operation, and then upon a, uh, a positive uh, to go forward, that is presented before this board, and then this board would make the final determination if we issue a license. There's a check and balance between the Liquor Commission and the Village Board. Under the uh, 5.102020 Authority of Liquor Commissioner, which is the seat of the president, shall have jurisdiction subject to the jurisdiction of the Illinois Gaming Board over and so supervisor all video gaming operations in the village governed by the Video Gaming Act. The regulations promulgated pursuant to the Video Gaming Act in this chapter. Liquor commissioners have all powers necessary and proper to fully and effectively execute the provision of this chapter, including but not limited to the following, and talks about investigations to determine the applicant's uh, eligibility, and the for the location of licenses and to select among competing applicants the applicants which best serve the interests of the village so uh, these are things that are a check on my side i am not a gamer you won't see me pulling the handle at all um, i can't say that about maureen but i <laughs> I, I will not be doing that um, but i understand this process I've spoken to a number of, of entities that, that I frequent in Oak Brook Terrace, in Q certainly, in Stacy's, and, uh, and others in Brookfield, and they don't seem to have any, any issues with the operation. I know Chief Carpino is from the village or from the city of Oak Brook Terrace. I know they have uh, not only um, off track betting, which they had for a number of years, it's still in operation and recently have a, uh, a location that has video gaming and has a few of these um, potentially in the hopper in Oak Brook Terrace. And I would ask John if there's been any <coughs> ill effect or arrests or situations that, uh, that Mayor Raguchi had to con uh, convene the Liquor Commission and meet out any fines or, or uh, uh, legal decisions or any adjudications in negative on any of the places that have had spots by you is currently. Well, as the village president uh, stated, I formally just recently, so I still do work for the city of Oak Terrace as the city manager uh, before I retired. Uh, we have over 20 liquor licenses in Oak Brook Terrace. Off track betting has been in the city for 17 years. Uh, they handle their own security. They very rarely call for police or any assistance, and 1% of the revenue is generated to the city. I know the city's uh, received over $11 million since it's been in place. Uh, object uh, video gaming, 
I know we have um, Stella's has already been approved, Susie's, Penny's, and Betty's. There's five, two Betty's actually, one on Roosevelt Road, one on 22nd Street. So there'll be five uh, video poker cafes, if, if you would. And we already have machines up and running at Gulliver's and anyways <laughs> in Oakland Terrace. And there are potential, some of the hotels have shown an interest. There are seven hotels in the city. Um, and I know the state law requires that the bartender has to be able to visually see the area where the players are at. Uh, there's a kiosk there, maximum bet of $2, uh, maximum win of $500. You have to be 21 or over to go into the area where the machines are specifically located. Um, the video poker cafes are similar to like uh, Panera Bread, if you would, with sandwiches and portable liquor licenses. And we've had no issue issues whatsoever. In fact, most of the people, unfortunately, are still waiting for their licenses because the state can't keep up with the demand of the people that have applied for the licenses. So these cafes are sitting there waiting for the machines because uh, the state does a real, very thorough background. Um, for Oakford Terrace, we were home rules. So we were able to charge $1,000 per machine. As one resident there said, it's about the $25 fee. At Oakford Terrace, we charge a thousand because we're home rule. We don't charge twenty-five dollars, and no one balked at it. I mean, it is what it is. These are family restaurants that are already up and running. These five video poker internet, uh, five video poker cafes will be unique, with something new for the city, um, and we're looking forward to it because it's it's another space that's been filled. We invested seven million dollars in a shopping center where Pete's Fresh Market is. The city did, and there's open spaces there. We want to see those stores fill up. So rather than have an empty store, we'd rather see a uh, place that has food, beer and wine, and offers the video poker. And the mayor, of course, has the right to pull the license, suspend it, whatever, at any time. Uh, and at this point, we have not had any, had any issues whatsoever. Thank you, John. Um, under 5.102220, number of licenses. Um, right now, the total number of loca location licenses for video gaming terminals issued under this chapter article <coughs> shall not exceed zero. So in the event that there is, if Stella's or whoever comes before us, we'll do the hearings as necessary. And the under C, the, uh, the check and balance piece here, the total number of location licenses for video gaming terminals may be increased or decreased from time to time by the adoption of an ordinance amending the code in the discretion of the Village Board of Trustees as follows. And it goes into uh, my being a liquor license and coming before. So there is a check and balance to this. Um, and I think we've heard information, um, both pro and con. Um, with that, there's a uh, motion and a second on the floor, I believe. Mm -hmm. So if any board member has any question or comments, please make. If not, Sherby, please call the roll. Trustee Stecker. Aye. Trustee Aye. Aye. Trustee Aye. Trustee Perry? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, everyone who participated in the commentary and informational setting. Thank you. Item number B, resolution. Oops, I'm sorry. I was just going to point out, uh, uh, Chief Carpino mentioned it also. Uh, there's really a backlog at the state uh, for the uh, vetting of these license applications and uh, section uh, 5102.160 uh, of our ordinance provides that the liquor commissioner may only issue a license after the Illinois Gaming Board uh, background investigation is complete and that the Illinois Gaming Board determines that the applicant is suitable for licensure, which means in plain English, they, they have a state license. So that process is months away uh, for the first applicant uh, in the village of Westchester. <coughs> I think there's like an 1800 application backlog at the state. So um, this is only the first step in a process. You're not gonna see something in a couple of weeks here. So thank you, thank Mike, you. for that. 
Okay, item B, resolution authorizing the village manager to execute an escrow agreement with PNC Capital to <coughs> protect against increasing market interest <coughs> rates for the financing and the purchase of the 2014 Ford F-350 pickup truck and a 2014 international five-yard dump and the computer-aided <coughs> dispatch system and records management system in aggregate amount of $330,130. Motion by? So moved. Second. <coughs> Celeste? I believe we're going to need to um, waive this particular motion appearing on the, um, uh, not having appeared on the COW agenda. <coughs> we talked about <coughs> PNC financial, but they now want to advance this by having an escrow set up so that the money can be deposited into the escrow to preserve the interest rates because they're concerned that they're going up in the next no. several weeks. Right, so, so what I would do would be ask Celeste and Paul, who made the original motion, that if there's their wish to make the motion to uh, waive the rule so we can discuss this so item. Moved. No problem. Paul, Second. same, fine. All in favor. All in favor of that, say aye. 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 Any opposition say no. Okay. Now, motion in a second to approve the resolution <coughs> um, to execute the ESCO agreement. Motion in second. Same, motion. same people. Yep. Celeste and Paul. Janet. Can you bring us up to speed? Okay. <clears throat> and actually, Ann, feel free to jump in. Um, Ann has been working with our um, representative at PNC Capital. We do have a master lease agreement with PNC uh, that we've used to finance our public works equipment over the last year and a half. Um, we, were, we received an interest rate alert from PNC last week indicating that the interest rates were increasing. Initially, when we contacted them about the financing of these items, we were quoted a rate of 2.18%. Um, the calculation today is showing approximately 2.242. 2.245. 2 2.245, thank you, uh, percent. And um, <coughs> our representative believes that it could be as high as 2.75 in October when we would need to actually fund um, some of these purchases. So by entering into the escrow agreement, we can preserve the current rate today. And even uh, we will be required to pay interest on the monies. But uh, we do believe, and you can clarify how much money we do anticipate to save by locking in this lower interest rate. I believe it was upwards of $3,000 over the, the term of the lease. Which is five years. Correct. <coughs> Okay, any more information? You know, I just have a question. Nick. Uh, this is just a question for Dave. Is this replacing equipment or is this in addition to? I was just curious. Yeah, replacing equipment. Okay. Right, and all of these items were budgeted in the fiscal 14 budget to be financed over five years. We're just packaging it, um, the three items into one financing instrument. Okay. And um, the budget did, uh, we had estimated a 3% interest rate, so we're making it favorable. Good. Quite quite an advantageous time to be, um, you know, making these Fine, necessary and budgeted purchases. I just have one comment um, before we go into the vote. It is my understanding that we do have an outstanding uh, debt for the fire truck at a higher percentage rate. Is it possible? And it has no bearing on this. I, I understand we can't lump that into this. But would the board consider um, having staff look into reducing that 4% or whatever it is to get this favorable rate? I think we've made two payments at the 4% rate. Is that my understanding? Correct. I believe that lease on the fire engine goes out to 2017 or 20? I believe it's uh, 17. It's still, still a ways enough out that um, if we could take advantage of these favorable rates coming up here that we'd save substantially over the life of that lease as well. Yeah, and I will correct myself, I believe it is 2020. I believe initially it was a 10 year loan and we actually have made um, a payment in the current year. So I believe we've made three of our payments and we have seven years left, uh, initial interest rate 4.0%. So I, I, I would think it would be prudent to give staff uh, the authority to, to look <coughs> in that as well and lock in another two point whatever rate instead of four plus, correct? Okay. okay. All right. There's a motion on the second uh, 
for the resolution for the escrow agreement as presented. Sherby, please call the roll. Trustee Jokovic. Aye. Trustee Pat Aye. Aye. Trustee Aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number C, motion approving uh, police chief employment with uh, John M. Carpino and authorize me to execute and attest to that agreement. I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. second. Give it to me. Ooh. Celeste. <laughs> Celeste. Any discussion? If not, roll call, please. Trustee Pat Aye. Trustee Batista. Aye. Trustee Perry. Aye. Trustee Rita. Aye. Trustee Stegner. Aye. Trustee Jokovic. Aye. Trustee Absolutely aye. Motion <laughs> carries. <laughs> Item number. Uh, Mayor, I'm probably going to have to amend the, the contract uh, to put. Maybe not the three-minute rule, but the five-minute rule. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can't have two of you in one meeting. <laughs> <laughs> you gave two extra minutes for Holy Cross, didn't you? Oh, geez. yeah, I gave him two minutes for Holy Cross. <laughs> okay, <laughs> manager's report, <laughs> item number nine. Uh, just a couple things to note uh, tonight. Just a reminder that um, the front office will be closed on Monday, September 2nd, in observance of Labor Day. Uh, if you need uh, police attention, you can call the police number. That uh, desk will be open 24 7. Um, also, the Park District will be hosting its annual back to school event Friday, September 6th, from 5 to 9 p.m. Um, at Community Park. It will feature a presentation by Radio Disney, um, a free swim, weather permitting, and the village will be hosting a uh, movie in the park, Finding Nemo. It's a uh, water-themed Disney event, so um, hope everybody can come out and enjoy that. Um, also, we've got uh, two ceremonies planned for September 11th. We'll have the traditional bell ceremony uh, beginning at 8.30 a.m. at the Memorial Fountain. And we will also be this year having uh, a celebration of heroes beginning at 6 p.m., Molly? Um, also at the fountain, which will be a celebration of uh, inspirational words and music uh, by various community choirs um, and also by Pastor Darius Brooks of Grace Central Church, who is a three-time Grammy Award winner. So you can come out and hear him, uh, him sing as well as all of our uh, beautiful community voices. So we hope to see you out there on September 11th. And that's all I have. Thank you. Michael. Nothing Any attorney me. report? Nothing other than what I commented earlier. Thank you. Board member reports. Any board member have anything? Frank, I don't think it was covered with the EDC. Do you don't, yeah, don't I get pretty, a pass? You're pretty well <laughs> said. I'll ask you that in, in case uh, uh, Reverend Joe missed anything. <coughs> no, he's all good. Uh, Allison, Nicholas. you have anything? Okay, <laughs> I'm good. Uh, we're going to be scheduling a 911 uh, meeting probably sometime next week or within at least the, the next two weeks. Uh, Police and Fire Commission, I think the applications were due Monday for fire, so uh, things are moving along with that as well. And I must comment oh. that the sign oh, yeah. that is now up <coughs> yeah. at Belmoral and Mannheim is just lovely. It's readable. It's readable. <laughs> it's, readable. it's high enough. Yeah. The brick <coughs> matches, and they appear to have done excellent work. Right. So I know you've had a, a part in that piece, and I wanted to thank you as well. And probably more. Uh, Angelo, anything? Uh, uh, the green committee will be kind of doing their presentation at the cow on the council. Okay. Nothing at this time. Tommy, Cam. Um, we had a meeting last night. We're um, thinking about doing uh, the. I can't even think about it. <laughs> Kids play day with the park district. Oh. Get out and play. <laughs> Get out Thanks, and play. Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Get out and play day with the um, park district. I've been talking to Gary about it, trying to organize something. Thank you. That's about it. Polly, how's uh, how's the bands and the sh and the car shows going? We're doing well. Uh, Monday night was we had Elvis in the house and uh, he packed them in really well. We had a great time. About 250 cars in the wow. parking lot. About 100 spectators watching Elvis. So it was a great, great night. Uh, Thursday nights are picking up with the concerts. Uh, this week we have Screaming Ends, which is a Rolling Stones band. So come out and join me. Have some fun. Bring your chair and listen to some great music. 
Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Celestine, anything for the order? Nothing. Does Nothing. the lights or the fountain look really nice? Yes, they do. <laughs> yes, they do. Okay. Um, Jim, your report, sir. Westchester Fire Department would like to welcome Chief Carpino to the village. Um, our guys are at your disposal just as much as your guys are, so if you need something, pick up the phone, come on by. I'm not a phone guy myself. I prefer, prefer visits, so uh, I'm just right across the parking lot. Uh, so welcome. Um, also, with this uh, recent heat wave we've had coming through, um, I just want to urge residents to check on their elderly neighbors um, to make sure they're okay. Uh, although the, our cooling center is not officially open, um, if anybody needs help with the, in the village to get out of the heat for uh, short periods of time, uh, we can uh, make arrangements or the uh, during regular business hours, the park district buildings and the uh, library are open to the public as well um, as alternate cooling centers. And um, it is back to school. Kids are running around getting, you know, in the morning. Um, stay off your phones in the school zones and um, look out for the kids crossing the street. Thank you. Annie, finance. Good evening. Um, if it hasn't been said to death, welcome Chief Carpino. Happy to have you. Uh, we did receive a draft report of our audit from the village's external auditors. I'm sure you remember their smiling faces earlier this summer. Um, staff is reviewing it and preparing the analysis that we're responsible for writing that goes at the front of the report, um, hoping to have a final report presented to the village board probably the second September meeting. So <coughs> I'm excited to have that wrapped up. Yeah, any as I saw um, as I went through the report, we should be at the around the 25, 30 percent mark as far as uh, expenses and add toward the line items. I did notice a couple that were um, a little bit advanced, and I know you had some uh, um, I, some caveats on some of those. Oh, addressing that with the cow. All right, I'm sorry. That's Do okay. it in the cow. Greg. Yes, it's been said to death, but welcome. I say it as well. <laughs> Um, the biannual uh, prescription drug take back program has sent out their information. I, I sent that along to you, uh, Mr. President, that uh, October 26th will be the, the next one. Uh, obviously, we, we love uh, knowing that, and I think uh, some of the water department people like it as well when we don't uh, flush those prescription drugs down the, the toilet, get it in the water system. Um, and to date, I haven't, uh, I've locked it up in one of our evidence rooms. We've got about 350 pounds already of, once again, just the pills. So we're, we're going to break all records again in, in the amount that uh, we're saving in there. Uh, also about the sign, uh, just a little bit of information. Some trustees have just brought some uh, great criticism or constructive criticism to the table with regards to how it looks. And one of the problems, I just want to note this, that it's very difficult to do it um, here and then find out what it looks like there. We're doing it on the little screen. So I'm trying to work something out where Valerie, Molly, and I can actually go on site and, and look at it from, let's say, the bank parking lot. Because what we see on the screen, I've done it myself. I'll end up going out there or after work I drove past and I said, well, that doesn't work that way. So I, I do appreciate you letting me know that it didn't look good. Gave me a reason to go out there, look at it after work. And I came back in, changing a few things up. Um, but I'm going to be still working, uh, Molly and Valerie, I've trained them both how it operates, but uh, it's more or less about being a graphic artist to know what colors go together and how it's going to work, and that's <coughs> not me. So I'm going to leave that in the hands of them, but I'm going to take them out there just so you know that the message hasn't changed before, for basically because of that reason, but I will be uh, out there with them, as I said, in the bank parking lot soon to, to see how the colors look. You know, make sure that it's readable from a distance, make sure the font looks good, uh, because that was some of the things that was brought up as to some things look different than others. We're going to make it look uh, uh, real good and make you all proud that everybody that drives through town sees that sign. Great. Thank you, Greg. Molly, you're up. Special events. Um, as Janet previously explained, we're having the events on 9-11 um, for um, the mem uh, memorial, and we are adding the 6 p.m. 
event this year so that more public are able to engage in this in the ceremony it is going to be different than the typical ceremony that we've had in the morning um, there's going to be uh, it's going to be somewhat interactive with a candlelight vigil and and things like that and I just wanted to um, thank all the help from Michael Hagan and Jim Adams and Greg and you and Ralph Zaccarello for assisting me in what's appropriate when it comes to honoring first responders. Um, but I hope people are able to make it out since we are accommodating a different time. I think it's gonna be uh, pretty beautiful. So come and, and, and engage yourself in that. Um, we're also having the fall festival at the fountain on October 5th from two to 8 p.m. Um, we have two bands lined up as well as the new dance studio in town, Panda <coughs> Dance Studios on Mannheim is also gonna be doing a performance as well as the Westchester Civic Theater because they're actually doing um, your good man, Charlie Brown. So they're gonna come out and it really goes <coughs> with the theme and do a few um, excerpts of their scenes from their shows. Um, other than that, I think, I think that's all. If I missed anything, let me know, but welcome again, Chief. Great, thank you, Molly. Dave, Public Works. Thank you, Sam. On behalf of myself and the Public Works Department, welcome, Chief Carpino. Um, the Public Works Department has been active recently patching in-house uh, east of Mannheim Road. Our most recent accomplishments have been on the boulevard, the seams on the boulevard. Um, we're also, uh, ash tree removal is ongoing, valve exercising is ongoing. We poured some light bulb bases at the fountain site uh, last week as well as the Mayfair pump station. We've been involved in graffiti removal last week in this. We also performed an emergency repair on a fire line behind Goodwill uh, early Sunday morning. Uh, the water main replacement on High Door and High Ridge and Charles is nearing completion. Uh, that's in the testing phase right now, I believe, from a good portion of that. Uh, one phase of that has already been completed and service lines are being installed. Uh, the 50-50 sidewalk program bids will be opened on September 4th, and the results of that will be presented to the Village Board on September 10th for approval. Great. Um, the uh, external paving project on Hull and Bond, is that uh, moving steadily along? It looks like they had the, uh, the base down the other day. Is that not correct? That's correct, yes. That uh, project is looking to be near complete by Labor Day. Uh, final surface probably be placed shortly after Labor Day with the final landscaping right behind that. Okay. And you mentioned about the, uh, the fire line behind Goodwill. I understand that there was a substantial water loss as a result of uh, trying to locate that water once the uh, alarm went off that the, the tank was, I don't want to say plummeting, but when the tank was starting to uh, decrease and, and actually set off the low, <coughs> the low level alarm. Is that not correct? That is correct, yes. Uh, actually, Brian Grippo is here this evening uh, on another matter, but I think uh, he was working on the actual gallon loss. I don't know if you have that uh, figure available, Brian, or I think we were looking at the yeah. 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 Okay. So we're looking into the gallon loss. I, I, I'm yeah. understanding it was quite substantial um, by the size of that main and the blowout that I saw in a photograph that um, there was a lot of water loss. It's, I guess it's unfortunate that the water lines don't have GPS where they'll tell you immediately where the where the uh, the loss is coming from until say a resident calls or we stumble upon it uh, accidentally. So yeah, this this was kind of in a inaccessible area, so it was uh, took a little bit of while to find that leak. Great, thank you, You're Melissa, welcome. hiding in the corner. Good evening again. Welcome to the new chief. Um, I just have a couple of things for tonight. I wanted to let you know that the golf course has applied for permits for their paddle hut and the plans have been reviewed and the comments given to the applicant. Um, also for the, the corporate towers, they've applied for most of the permits for tenant relocation as a result of Follett deciding to locate here in Westchester. I think they only have one more permit that they'll be applying for for one other tenant. Um, staff is reviewing applications for our part-time uh, plan reviewer position. Um, and the last thing is um, we have reimbursed one person for the flood uh, flood control program or flood flood reimbursement program, and we'll probably have three more ready for approval 
ready for the village manager's approval by the end of the week. <coughs> What's the golf course building? The paddle hut. So there's, um, they have these. I forget what the paddle. What are they called? They're like paddle tennis courts, and oh, so okay. they're heated. And in between the two courts, there's like a viewing area between. Oh, them. all right. Okay. Great, Sherby. Commentary. Anything this evening, young lady? Great. Thank you. Okay, my turn. If you thought John could talk long, oh, you'll be go. a man. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I will keep it brief again. Welcome to John. I think he knows my feelings. Um, Celeste mentioned it, and, and actually Dave did as well. If those that have driven by the fountain or been by the fountain, you can see that the antique street lights that were one in the possession of my family and one in uh, Bill Ernst's possession as, as scrap years ago have been refurbished and erected, right, uh, as you walk down the path, and they look absolutely stunning. Um, I know Mike Drager did a great job. We cleaned them up and got them up there in, in time. And also they're putting another light standard in the posts we had so we didn't have to buy these things. Um, over at the Mayfair Rec Center to give some support light to the Park District and also some support light to our, uh, our pump station. So uh, there was a standard there at one time and when we redid the, the parking area there, um, we put the, the pipes in and we were ahead of the game there. So that looks um, very good. Um, earlier today, I was the steering committee chair for Cook County for the uh, mitigation plan for Cook County. There are 27 members of the steering committee that were present and we had our second meeting. These meetings are open to the public. They're held at 69 West Washington and the next meeting I believe is September 24th. It's the fourth Tuesday of the month at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. They're open to the public and the whole idea of this is for Cook County to have a mitigation plan Without the mitigation plan, Cook County cannot get any monies from FEMA as a result of any disaster event that would occur in Cook County. Chicago has a plan. Westchester has their own plan, which um, I have to give kudos to Janet. We've been working all week on trying to get our plan from V3, the preliminary one, to the MWRD, to the governor's office, to uh, the lobbyist, to IEMA, uh, to everybody that we can get this plan to, to try to um, expand the Mayfair water retention pond uh, another 40%, which looks like it's a possibility. So we're looking for funding. Um, if we are successful in that, it's potentially that we could get a 75% funding. There may be some other funding opportunities as well, but I'm here to tell you that we're ahead of the game because we have a plan. I think Oak Park is the other neighbor here that has a plan that if they have some flooding projects they can put. In Janet's conversation with IEMA, they have over $200 million in plans that they're looking at. Um, a lot of those are to take properties out of the floodplain. I think the, uh, uh, Ron Davis was pleased that we had a, a plan about something other than removing properties from the floodplain that this might be doable. There's no commitment. Um, however, we're pushing forward with that and uh, Janet got all the paperwork in on time, so we're just pretty much waiting to hear. We also attended a flood meeting as well in the Village of Lyons today where the, the focus was for municipal entities to try to get going on their flood mitigation plans. Cook County, like I said, we're going to put together a plan that will be volume one. Volume two will be all the communities in Cook County putting their uh, addendum or uh, added piece to volume two. So hopefully we'll have 105 communities all lined up in volume number two, which each community may be a little bit different in, in what things they believe are uh, specific to their community that may be different from others. Um, but Westchester already has the annex in the game. We will certainly be updating that 
If there's new stuff that comes out of this steering committee that certainly Westchester could use, it'll be back here to uh, make an amendment. These plans have to be reviewed every five years. There's 11 months, which is the goal of the steering committee for Cook County. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to do it before then, but that's pretty much the goal to have something in place for FEMA and the state of Illinois to approve sometime in, in May. So follow up on that. Other than that, I will uh, stay quiet. I don't believe we have an executive session. Is there a motion to second to adjourn the board so meeting? Moved. Second. Who? Who gave it? I don't know. By Nick, I you could yeah, say it fast enough. Yeah. <laughs> Nick and Frank. All those in favor of adjourning our board meeting say aye. 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 Any opposition say no. We stand adjourned. We'll go right into our committee of the whole.